Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Anything that God has asked you to do in your life, you are equipped to do it. So stop saying this is too much for me. I just can't handle this. Thank you, Lord, for the word today. We appreciate it so much. And just pray that you'll help us today get the, the real message that you have here in Jesus' name. Has your get up and go got up and gone? <laughs> no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing in life, no matter what your occupation is, your station in life, there will be times when you get tired of doing it. See, we all think, well, if I could just do that. <laughs> well, if I could just do that. Well, if I could just live here. But I'm telling you the truth. I don't care what you do. There are going to be times when you get tired of doing it. The only people who succeed in life are those who can do what they know they should be doing without emotion to motivate them. Now, did you hear me? The only people in life who can succeed are those who can do what they know they need to do without emotion motivating them. You know, moms get tired of taking care of kids. It's not that you didn't want them, but you get tired of taking care of them. You get tired of cleaning the house. You get tired of cooking. The kids get tired of going to school. They get tired of being kids, you know. Kids want to make more decisions. Adults want to be, have a day or two where they can make no decisions. I get tired of doing what I do at times. I love it, but to be honest, you know, I get tired of traveling sometimes. I get tired of always being in charge of something. And, you know, I don't get to sit out there and just look at somebody doing what I'm doing. You, you know, I was... I was thinking about you guys when you were worshiping. I saw one woman, she was just into it. And See, I'm into it, but I've got to also be thinking about what I'm going to say when I come up here and open my mouth. And uh, to be honest, we always think we want more of something, but the thing that people don't see is the more you have of anything, the more responsibility that you also have. And people don't realize when they're asking for things that they're not just going to get the fun part, they're also going to get the work part, the responsibility part. You get a bigger house, you're going to have more to clean. Amen? Sometimes I get tired of asking people for their money all the time. But you have not because you ask not, so <laughs> this is part of what I need to do. If I want to help people all over the world, then I have to keep encouraging people to help me help those people. People in the public eye want to be normal. And normal people want to be recognized and well-known. So my point is, is that no matter what your station in life is and no matter what you're doing, please believe me today when I tell you that doing something else is not going to make you any happier long-term than you are right now. Now, yes, you know, if you got your dream job, that might make you happier for a little while than what you are right now, but you will get tired of doing it. I mean, there are people who just think they've died and gone to heaven when they come to work at our ministry. It's like, <laughs> and you know what? After about a month, they find out it's a job, just like any other job, that we don't float around on a cloud all day and sing the hallelujah chorus. They work for Joyce Meyer, but they never see me. You see me more on TV than most of them, them do. And we expect them to get to work on time. We expect them to work hard. We have different guidelines at the office. And so after all, it just turns out to be a job, a good job, but still just a job that you can get just as tired of. How many of you ever get tired of doing what you're doing? <laughs> well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Only Mike and Dave didn't raise their hand. Uh, Dave, do you ever get tired of doing what you're doing? He, he really doesn't. He's just like... I'm, I think Dave's from another planet, and I just haven't figured out which one yet, but that's all right. All, all the emotion he doesn't have, I've got it for both of us. 
When your get up and go has got up and gone, you need to get up and get it back. You can't sit around and just, well, I wish I felt better. Or even worse, expecting somebody else to come along and make you feel better. God has given us a free will. We don't have to be the victim of just every feeling and weird emotion that comes down the path at us. We can make decisions about how we're going to live, and we can get up and live the way that God wants us to live by His grace and by His mercy. Clearly, let me say that we do nothing without God, but at the same time, anything that God has asked us to do, He is ready to help us do it. Anything that God has asked us to do. So yes, I do need grace to do what I'm doing, but there's another side of it, which is I already have that grace because God would not ask me to do it and not equip me to do it. Anything that God has asked you to do in your life, you are equipped to do it. So stop saying, this is too much for me, I just can't handle this. I said, stop saying, this is just too much for me, I can't handle this. I said, stop saying... <laughs> Nothing dead praises God. <laughs> Psalm 115, 17. I want you to see that this is actually in the Bible. Psalm 115, verse 17. I love this scripture. It says a lot. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any who go down into silence. So, we're going to talk for a few minutes about some dead things and learning how to discern when something is dead and when it's full of life. What about continuing to do things that God got finished with a long time ago? <laughs> you know, there's a kind of a rule of thumb. If the horse has been dead 10 years, it's time to dismount. <laughs> God's always moving, he's flowing, and. You know, sometimes something is perfectly right for this time frame in your life, but now just out of habit or whatever, sometimes we don't even know why, you know, we're still trying to do this same thing another 10 years down the road, and it's just, it's dead, it's no, no, I don't understand what's wrong. Well, maybe God got finished with it a long time ago, and you're not finished with it yet. Maybe God's trying to do a new thing. I tell a story sometimes, and this is actually a true story, about a, uh, a guard at a castle that stood in this one spot, 24 hours around the clock, they had a guard that stood there guarding what? Nobody knew. So somebody got curious enough to check into, what is this guy doing here? Well. As they check back far enough into history, at one time, one of the queens had planted a rose bush there. And she didn't want it to get trampled until it got well rooted, so she put a guard there to guard it. Now, like a hundred years later, a guard is standing there round the clock guarding nothing simply because that was what they had always done. I don't care how long you've been doing it, if it doesn't have life in it, Amen. you need to learn to know when you're touching death and when you're touching life. Amen? Because nothing dead praises God. Our dead works don't praise God. The Bible talks a lot about dead works. What's a dead work? It's a work that's not working. It's me trying to do God's job. It's me making my plan, expecting God to bless it. He's the author and the finisher. And if he doesn't author a thing, he has no obligation to ever finish it. You start it, you finish it. Amen? And last night when we were having true confession, I told you that one of my sins the last two weeks was starting this big thing, getting a bunch of people involved, and then realizing that I didn't have peace, and then I realized I never asked God about it. Acknowledge God in all your ways, and He will direct your path. 
And sometimes God, it may be okay, something that we're doing, but God gets a little insulted when we leave him out. One of the wisest things to do is to just consider God, to consult him. Is this the way that you want me to go? Now, depression is a type of deadness. I think we can all say that. Anybody here who's ever been depressed for even a half a day, you know that there's no worse feeling. You have no desire to do anything. Thoughts are dark and negative. And you know, when David was depressed, the psalmist David, King David, when he was depressed, he didn't just lay there and be depressed. Let's look at Psalm 42 and 43 and just see some of the action that David took. Now, let me just preempt what I'm going to say about depression by saying this. I know that many people suffer from depression. I'm not at all being insensitive. If it's something medical that you cannot help, then keep looking for the help that you need until you get it. But almost everything that I read on the subject says that even if depression is caused from something in your body or something medical, you still have to fight it on several levels. And so maybe you can't do anything about the medical part, but a lot of people's depression really has nothing to do with something wrong with them. It's the way they're thinking. Come on, does anybody know you can think yourself right into a fit? It's the way they talk. It's their outlook on life. It's not being grateful. It's not being thankful. But largely, it's just by having your mind on the wrong stuff. And that's what David talks about here. Psalm 42, 5. I love the way he talks to his own soul. Why are you cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Hope in God and wait expectantly for him for I shall yet praise him, my help and my God. Now, if you read the first part of this, David remembers, like, look at verse, verse 3, Psalm 42, 3. My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? So he was apparently going through a really rough time, and even people are taunting him, saying, well, where is your God? These things I earnestly remember. I love his response. These things I earnestly remember and pour myself out within me, how I went slowly before the throng and led them in procession to the house of God like a bandmaster before. And so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there was a time when he was bringing the ark of God into the city and they threw such an outrageous party and David got so unbelievably happy that he stripped down to a loincloth and danced in the streets. And he said, I'm crying, but here's what I'm going to think about. Come on now. See, you can think about anything you want to think about. You don't have to think about every bad thing that's ever happened to you in your life. You don't have to just think about all your problems all day long. You can choose to remember some good things in your life. And so can I. You know, when I'm feeling a little bit off in the morning, and that's usually when you can tell things are about to go the wrong way. When I'm feeling a little bit off in the morning, one of the things that, well, there's a couple things I'm going to share with you today. But one of the things that I've found that really, really helps me is just to get thankful on purpose. I have a mission this year, so you're going to hear me say this over and over and over and over and over and over and over, but that's the way we get it. I really want to get people to understand that they can't be passive, and a passive person wants something good to happen, and they're just going to sit there and wait to see if it does, but that we must be purposeful people. We must be people who live on purpose. And by that, I mean we decide what we're going to do, and we get up and do it. Amen. We don't wait to have to feel like it or to think it's a good idea or to have a whole bunch of people clapping and cheering for us. Just because my get up and go has got up and gone, that doesn't mean that I have to lay down with it. I have greater power than how I feel. I can actually say I am going to get up off of this couch, and I am going to do something with my life. You know, there's a law of activity that I heard recently, and this is simple, but I love it. The more you do, the more you're able to do. 
The less you do, the less you're able to do. And if you want to get old quick, just go retire at 65 and go sit in a chair and see what happens to you. People ask me all the time, are you thinking about retirement? No. No. I'm thinking about refirement, not retirement. I feel better than most of you do at 30 and 40. And a lot of it has to do with attitude. And a lot of it has to do with the fact, yes, that, you know, we try to take care of ourselves. But even more than that, it's the way we think and our outlook on life and putting ourselves into something that's bearing good fruit. You sit, you hang out with dead stuff all the time and it's going to get off on you. You even got to get away from some of these dead people you're hanging out with all the time that have nothing but some sad story to tell you all the time and don't want to do anything but talk about how bad everything is out in society and how miserable they are. Hello? <sighs> that felt good. <laughs> nothing dead praises God. Amen? Amen? Not a dead attitude, nothing. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why are you cast down, O my inner self? And why should you moan over me and be disquieted within me? Now hang on to this. Hope in God. You're gonna, I'm going to tell you something a little bit later about hope. And watch this. And wait expectantly. Woo, I love that. I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about expectancy. Some of you need to get your expectors out of the back of the closet, dust them off, and get them activated again. Because you've gotten into a habit of just sitting around, I don't know what's going to happen. I guess we'll just wait and see. <laughs> well, I can prophesy. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. God said to Jeremiah, what do you see? Amen? After Abram had lost everything, God took him up, told him to climb a mountain, and he got him up there and he said, what do you see? And so I don't want to talk about what you've lost today. It's not that I don't care, but that's not what this is about. I don't want to think about what I've lost. I don't want to think about the fact that I lost my childhood and I was abused by my parents and, you know, now I'm you know, there's nobody left but me, and I have, I have no good memories from that. But you know what? I'm going to talk about what I do have. I'm going to think about what I do have and all the benefits and the, the good things that God has done for me. Yes. Amen? Yes. Please take what I'm getting ready to say, okay. <laughs> Some of you have sang the same old song for so long that people are so tired of hearing it. What do you think the Bible means when it says, sing unto the Lord a new song? <laughs> That's not just making up some, oh, I love you, Lord. That means just get something coming out of your mouth besides the same old thing all the time. Poor me, what about me? I've had a bad deal in life. You know, I didn't get a good start. My parents didn't love me. My parents didn't love me either. They didn't know how to. They were all messed up, dysfunctional. I survived. I'm still here. I raised four brilliant children. I'm helping people all over the world. It's our attitude. It's the way we look at what's happening to us. Why so downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God and wait expectantly for Him. You wake up in a bad mood, change it. I'm in a bad mood. Well, most of the world is about two minutes after they get up. I don't know what my deal was this morning. But I woke up, and I am telling you the truth, for five minutes I was walking to the left. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I told Dave, I said, I feel like, and I kept, I'd walk in a straight line, and then I'd find myself going this way. And I thought, what is this all about? But I didn't just go to bed and say, oh my gosh, I must have some kind of terrible to the left disease. I'm going to just... <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's called fight the good fight of faith. And man, you got to fight for yourself sometimes. Your moods belong to you. Don't just give them to the devil. And then again, in Psalm 43, he says the same thing. I'm not going to go read it, but why so downcast all my soul? Put your hope in God. Now, you know, the interesting thing is sometimes you got to talk to yourself more than once. A little self-examination helps. What is my problem? What is the root of my problem? When you're in a stinky mood, don't just look out here at everything. Well, you, well, you, you. My boss and my job and my house and my bank account. How about a little self-examination? What is my problem? <laughs> Not being thankful. Not looking at what I do have. Yeah, last week I had to spend a couple days in the hospital, not for me, but being with somebody that was sick. And, you know, I, I didn't really want to be there. I mean, I wanted to bless them, but, I, you know, that was supposed to have been my day off. <laughs> but you know how I got over it? I thought, man, thank God I'm not the one in the bed. Yeah. How many of you would rather be visiting somebody in the hospital than be the one in the hospital? How many would rather visit somebody in jail than be the one in jail? Yeah. Ooh, hallelujah. And I'm telling you what, the way the world is today, it can just vacuum all the joy right out of you and it only takes a few minutes. That's why you gotta fight to keep a good attitude and to, to be thankful and appreciative. And some mornings, I make a list of things to be thankful for. If I got a real bad case, I don't just try to think, get out my, I'm like, I am thankful for. <laughs> you know, there may be a few people who just wake up happy and they're that way every day of their life. I'm kind of married to one of those, but I'm not one of those. <laughs> Dave wakes up every morning, oh, what a beautiful morning, oh, what a beautiful day, and I'm like, Let me get my caffeine level up before you make any noise. <laughs> you know, David felt, now listen to me, David felt down, down, down. But here's what I love. He was spiritually active. See, no matter how I feel in my soul, there's a deeper part of me that I can activate by faith, and that's my spirit. And with our spirit, we can fight all this nonsense that comes against our soul, and you will win if you will get up and do the part that God is asking you to do. You got to be a fighter in life. It's really easy to give up. You don't need the anointing of the Holy Ghost to give up. Have you lost your enthusiasm and your excitement? Well, one of the ways that you can increase it is by being intentional about being thankful. Let's do everything that we do for Him and then aggressively expect great things to happen in our life. Unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa and this region in KwaZulu-Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of, as well, uh, is quite horrendous. Even in the area, we were, we were scared for the kids. It's not breaking when they're missing. I'm not going to let that happen. That's why I'm fighting for this area. Some of the children in this area mm -hmm. have disappeared? Yes. They did. What we never found them. Before we opened up this crutch, they are safe, healthy, good. They are good. 
So these early childhood development centers are not uh, little nice-to-haves or nursery places where they keep kids, you know, have fun and play games. They do all of those things, but this is actually investing in long-term benefit. This really is something that we can install into a community that opens up the door of the community for us to share the gospel and really stands as a witness, as a shining light into the community about the love of Christ. And we have such great opportunities through our Classrooms of Hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe classroom learning opportunities for young children. You and your special gift today will change lives. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl slash shop. Hoe zit het met een dagelijkse verfrissing? Frisse impulsen levert de dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce per e-mail. Meld je gratis aan. 